Harlem, near the Market Square. On what street? Smithers. Smithers. Perfect. 25. Perfect pronunciation. Yeah. And, okay, so why, why, why are we here? How did this all happen? Uh, well, why not? Um, me and my business partner Kevin already own a coffee bar in Amsterdam uh, by a different name, Bar Marta. And uh, because I moved to Harlem uh, to live here, I moved from Amsterdam to Harlem, we decided to open a coffee shop here as well. And this came by um, by accident and we thought it was a pretty cool location. Very small, very cute. Uh, and we wanted to make uh, good coffee here. Okay, it certainly is good coffee. And I guess I'd like to know once the scooters go, why, why is it such good coffee? What's your secret? Our secret? Uh, we don't really have a secret. Okay. Um, we roast uh, the coffee ourselves. One of our business partners of the other business we own is a coffee roaster. Uh, it's a specialty coffee roaster, so everything, uh, all the coffee beans we roast are 80 points or above. What, is that, what does that mean, 80 points or above? Well, every coffee is graded from a 0 to a 100, basically. Okay. Uh, 100 being the highest. And a specialty is basically coffee uh, grown, uh, farmed and grown and roasted on a, in like a special way. Mm. Uh, and it's graded 80 points or above, then it's called specialty. How interesting. Who does the grading? Uh, you can do it yourself if you want, but pretty much coffee roasters, coffee farmers, uh, you can just uh, taste coffee by coffee cupping. Okay, so what happens, you get a, a bean, you source the bean, and then you roast it, and then you grind it and make a coffee, and then you taste it and go, this is a 85? Or Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, yeah. And but it's uh, graded with more than one person, obviously, Okay. Uh, to get a very general opinion. So, who's the other person, your business partner? No, we don't do the grading. Uh, we only buy coffee that's already graded. Ah. The coffee roaster buys that coffee based on points. Okay. So if you have a coffee of 84 points, uh, you buy that, uh, you roast it, and the way you roast it defines a little bit of the flavor profile as well. And then uh, we bring it over here and then we make coffee from it. Okay, so that's amazing. I've been yeah. drinking coffee for so many years and I never had any idea about that whole concept. I guess it's probably fairly obvious, but anyway, we did get sidetracked, but I think it was a good a good uh, path to go down. Right. And it leads us to the next point is, so we talked about the quality of the, of the bean and the roasting. The next thing would be what you do with it. And I think that's obviously an important element and that would be a key component in producing a decent cup of coffee. So can you tell us a bit about why we like your coffee? Um, with, you say what we do with it, do you well, mean how we make it? Or? Yeah, why is your coffee better than someone else's coffee where they, you know, have a... Well, compared, push, yeah. like we're not the best coffee in the world. Uh, there's a lot of people on this level, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't say like, hey, I have the best coffee ever. Um, but in general, we win it from most people because we're very precise. Mm -hmm. So our coffee is very good. Uh, we talked about it being 80 points or above, but also uh, we weigh everything. We use uh, special filtered water. Uh, we measure our extraction times very well. Uh, we measure how much coffee we actually get out of the machine. And all of that combined brings us a uh, pretty good coffee. But making uh, one espresso is quite um, something we we, uh, we check out all the factors we can adjust, put it to a good espresso, and we do that for every shot. In most coffee bars they get lazy, so they stop weighing how much coffee they're going and they do it like kind of. But the difference in grams you get is quite severe. Um, so if you pull a shot with 19 grams, it's very different than when you pull it with 20 grams. Mm. So if you don't weigh everything, you don't know what you're doing. And then the flavor of the coffee also starts... Uh, Diminishing? Yeah, well it, it changes. Okay. So you, you're not getting the right flavors out. 
Also, tasting your coffee every once in a while is pretty good. We try to do it every half hour. Whoa, that's a lot of coffee. And get. some places only taste it once a day. And then how do you know what your coffee tastes like? Right, so you're drinking coffee every half hour? I taste it. Okay. I don't drink it every right. half hour, only okay. in the morning. Sure. Um, <laughs> okay, well, and also you don't just make coffee. We should mention that you, um, you teach people how to make coffee too. You may as well have a little plug there and, and right yeah um, yeah we give workshops mm -hmm. uh, we do it through a separate platform so it's called barista workshop mm. um, it's basically a platform where we try to teach people the basics of making coffee so they can improve their coffee skills at home uh, without it being too super technical uh, it should be something that's still applied for people who have no knowledge about coffee whatsoever Right. Uh, because a lot of barista courses, they tend to lose themselves either uh, in simplification or in uh, it being too difficult to understand. Uh, because I can teach you a lot of things and flavors that you cannot really taste yet because you're not developed that far yet. Uh, but it might be more fun to have just an introduction workshop where you can actually uh, get to know the product mm. and uh, get some guidelines on how to do it. Instead okay. of like it being super difficult. All right, um, and let's start wrapping up. So, what about a, a fun coffee fact? Any any important? A fun coffee fact? Yeah, why not? Um, Jesus, I have no clue. <laughs> Where do your beans come from? Where's the most popular place for for beans? Yeah, to... but it's very diverse. Is I it? mean, uh, there's so much coffee going around in the world. It's almost impossible to pinpoint it to one location what's the best like i like african coffees myself because they're a little bit more fruity uh, but there's there's so many many different places you can get a coffee from it's bizarre plus it's not really a fun fact it's it more, is it's fun it's, oh it's, it's fun a, it's fun for me well, yeah okay i have to dif differentiate the the uh, the difference between fun and funny Okay. Yeah. Well. Right. I don't know. It just it just came out, but that's good. That's great. What about we have a cup of coffee, or at least I will have a cup of coffee. I'll have a cup of coffee as well. Okay. Awesome. Specialty coffee uh, in the center of Haarlem in the, in the Netherlands nearby Amsterdam in my uh, little specialty coffee shop. Okay, and how did it all come about? Can you give us a little bit of background about yeah. the cute little shop? Well, it all started uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, I started working in a coffee place in the same street as we are now in the Kruisstraat in Haarlem. This place called uh, Victor's Espresso Bar. So this was my first experience with uh, making coffee, serving uh, and serving a coffee. And I immediately fell in love with the product, with the work, with being a barista. And I wanted to know everything about it. So I did that for almost four years. And then I moved to Australia for a year and I, tra I traveled through Australia, which is a really coffee minded a country and a very high standard of coffee uh, and when I was there I saw all these coffee shops in Sydney and Melbourne and all these uh, machines and th this was the moment when I thought I really want to have this as well when I go back to Holland and I knew one thing for sure is that I wanted to have my own coffee shop my own coffee place but I wanted to do it by myself so with no staff just one-man show and for that to happen I needed a very small place because if you have a big shop you have a lot of tables and you need help and you need waiting stuff and I just wanted to do it all by myself so I was looking for a very small shop 
I came back in Holland in 2016. Uh, worked at Blanc Meisters, worked at Mogador, which are different coffee shops here in Harlem. Uh, and meanwhile, I was looking for my own place, my, my own shop. And it took me a long time to, uh, to find something. And then one day I realized there was this shop where I used to uh, go and get a sandwich when I was working at Victor's. And uh, that's where, where we are now. So before I was here, there was another butcher family in this whole shop. And they had a sandwich shop in here. And that's how I know this place. And I thought that would be a very good place. It's in the center in a busy street, on a nice location, and it's very small. So this, uh, then I uh, got here and uh, I spoke to Ruche, who is my neighbor from the Slavis Doctor. And uh, that's how it all started. Fantastic. Yeah. And why did you want to do it yourself? Is that so you can keep the quality high? Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons. I just want to do it. I just want to do everything by myself, uh, especially with making coffee, of course, so that the center is always the, the same, uh, and you can just do it do it all by yourself, and you don't need to 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 uh, discuss with other people. I I don't know. I just really like this vibe, and this idea of of doing something all by yourself in a very little shop. And you don't need a lot, you don't need a lot of places. I only have maybe eight or ten uh, seatings outside, five insides, and a lot to go, of course. And this is just how I, how I imagine my, my own coffee place. There was this one shop in Melbourne called Little Patricia. Uh, and this is the first time where I saw a very small coffee shop with two guys behind the bar over there just doing their thing, making coffee, having conversations with all the uh, regular customers and I just really, really liked it. Awesome. Melbourne is a coffee mad city really. I like it's crazy. Did yeah. you take anything in particular back, any real significant standout ideas or...? I not something specific, but I, I just think that the whole Melbourne vibe, and I think you get the same vibe in Sydney as well, but just this, 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 this whole Australian coffee-minded vibe, mm. which you can only get there, and you don't get it in any other country or, or city, it's just a whole different vibe. I, I just wanted to have something similar to, to that. There's one thing uh, it's the Prana Chai, maybe you know it from Melbourne. Yeah, this is the one that I got there, and uh, because I was I am working with specialty coffee, so a high quality coffee, I wanted to be uh, everything uh, high quality. So also the Prana, and this is when I uh, thought of Melbourne and thought of the Prana Chai and uh, tried to get it to Holland, and uh, yeah, so this is uh, what I use from there. Uh, and also the long leg, because here in Holland everyone calls it an Americano or a uh, okay. coffee, and in Australia you guys call it a long leg. Those those kind of things, and just this, this whole mix of 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 of, of vibes and, and 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 everything together just made me uh, made me do this. Yeah. Okay. But I got a lot of inspiration from Australia, from Melbourne, from Sydney, really a lot. So, what makes a good coffee? A lot. More than just a coffee. More than just a coffee. It's everything. It's, uh, of course, you need a good quality coffee, of course. Uh, like 80 or higher? Yeah, like 80 because I'm using specialty coffee and it's, it's only called specialty coffee when it scores 80 points or higher. But you can make a good coffee with 70 points or 60 points as well. Uh, Isn't but that a bit controversial? It is, <laughs> but everything is, huh? Everything is. But I, uh, what I try to say is that you may can use a, co uh, a coffee of a lower quality and upgrade it by being a cool guy, yeah. being being nice to your customers, okay. having a nice spot in the sun, you know, those kind of things. But it's even better if you have all those kind of things and use a high quality coffee, of course. 
Um, and of course, that's my thing. I, I, I want to use the, the best possible quality coffee. I work with Stoker, which is an Amsterdam based roasting company, and I switch uh, uh, origin every two months. Yeah. So I'm just in my switch now. I'm using this Brazil for the last four days, and then I'm switching to a West coffee from Colombia. I will use it two, two months, and then I will switch again. So I think though there are a lot of things making uh, a coffee a good or a bad coffee. It's the quality of the coffee, it's the equipment you use, it's the service you give to your customers, it's the spot where you are, it's just this whole, mm. it's everything, it's not only just the coffee. Yeah, absolutely. And with so many variables it's easy to go wrong I suppose. But it's very easy, but if you do it every day you know what to do. But of course there is a lot, but I like working with a new coffee and then see what happens if I lower the water uh, temperature or make it a bit higher. What happens if I use a pre-infusion uh, or, or, or not, if I grind coarser or finer, all these kind of things. Right, so what would be an example of something interesting you've discovered, I could call it a fun coffee fact, but I probably shouldn't, but something interesting you've discovered in your coffee journey? Something well, sometimes, and this is the main thing, they say uh, a good extraction is somewhere between, let's say, 23 and 30 seconds, but some, sometimes I had a coffee extracted at 20 seconds or at 38, and it's even better than when you would extract it at 25. But it's not very easy to say because it's... Sorry, what does that mean, extracting it at 20? Or like, uh, well, uh, they say that the, uh, the extraction time, so the, the, the contact between the water and the coffee, yeah. so making an espresso is best between, let's say, the, the, the 25 and the 30 seconds. 25 and 30 seconds from... From start. No, no, from, from start. So I'm grinding my my coffee, yeah. putting the portafilter in, pressing the button, and that's when it and starts, that's the extraction time. Okay. Extraction, and, until it ends. Okay. Uh, so making an espresso between, should take between 25 and 30 seconds. This right. is the main rule. Interesting. But I sometimes got a coffee, I was trying a lot of things, extracting it at 25, and I thought, no, this is not good, I need to, 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 uh, to adapt something, and then I, I, I might uh, grind grind coarser or use less water or those kind of things and then I would come in the extraction of 20 seconds making a delicious coffee. Sometimes I had a coffee extracted at 35, 6, 7, 38 seconds making it even more delicious than if you would extract it at 25 oh, or 30. So sometimes and of course this is uh, it's not that you should always do it like this but some coffees just can. Right. So there's some sort of, well, there's obviously a relationship between the bean, how it's grinded, the coarseness, everything, the extraction time, the everything. It's the bean, it's mm. the process, it's how old is your coffee, or how fresh is your coffee, how, how coarse or how fine you grind. It's all, it's, it's related to get how much coffee you use, how much water you use. It's a lot. Okay. And what's your favorite coffee? I, I don't have a favorite because this is why I use, uh, this is why I switch uh, coffee every two months because there is so much good quality coffee, you know, why would you stick to one? Because there is a lot from Central America, South America, Africa, Asia, you have a lot of good coffee. So this is why I want to switch every two months to uh, give the people a different experience at, as well. So that's why I'm using a natural Brazil now, which is full bodied, milk and nutty flavors, quite strong. But now I'm switching to one from Colombia, which is a washed one and will be very different. It will be lighter, slightly more acidic, uh, citrus tones, a bit sweet, a bit uh, summery. So this is why I like to change. So I don't really have a favorite coffee. Mm. I like a lot of coffee, a lot of different coffees as well.
Okay, and before the sun sets on Harlem and our little coffee adventure, there's a few others I'd like to mention. One is Cleef in the Franz Halls district, and it's here behind me. Well worth a visit if you like cake. Next, we have this one. It's called Mogador. It's in the bottom mark, and it's a great place to go, particularly if you find yourself in the bottom mark. And last but not least, there's another one you could check out. It's called Mika, and it's just down the end of this lane and to the right if you're walking behind me. It's worth a visit. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it, like it. If you didn't like it, comment, tell me why. If you've got other suggestions or other things you'd like to see in the Netherlands, why not comment on that too? And finally, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.